So, uh, since we promised at the very beginning of MetaNet that this would be a completely transparent and open shop, we share with you something that normally is not shared to the outside, namely the very first steps. Yeah, the first steps, we will share with you every step. If you come to further events yeah, and don't get, <laughs> don't get bored by that, then uh, we will share with you every step in the, in, in the development of what can, if we manage well, really be an important instrument in getting much more and much better recognition and support for our field. Yeah. So let me start by recapitulating what has been done so far. Um, so already during this vision process that uh, Joseph uh, talked about and showed the outcome of, uh, not only through the v reports that were then put together in this one report that Joseph talked about, we got many um, valuable suggestions that uh, will be important ingredients to the SRA, uh, but also in, in, the, in these meetings, yeah, when you get um, decision makers, when you get in, in, in intelligent people with ideas and visions from different industrial sectors together with researchers and rooms, then you get lots of ideas on the side. Yeah, you get lots of things and we try it as well as possible to take note of these yeah, and uh, record those because many, many of these things will, may come back later on, because already uh, you, you cannot keep people from thinking other things than you ask them to think about, so they come up with many suggestions already uh, that may, uh, will become uh, important later. For instance, things that are more related to, to business or more related to markets or how to, um, how to fuel, how to support innovation processes yeah, that are not directly found in the technology visions. So that we recorded. Then we carefully screened the text sort not yet treated in the linguistic literature of SRA. Yeah, that's a completely different text sort. Yeah, there's not so many of these. And so we tried to learn from other initiatives. What did they do right? What did they do wrong? And very often it's very hard for us now to see from the results what worked later in the persuasion process, but at least we could look at it and say this is obviously not very convincing or so. Yeah. So we, we try it with common sense and looking uh, with many people looking at it. So we, we screened them and we, we saw they are on the one hand quite different, but then there are many elements that are shared by all of them, not surprisingly, and I'll come to this. So then in the first two meetings of the Meta Technology Council, we discussed procedures. How do we go from here? The input, what should be all input, what counts as input, and what is the overall structure yeah, of the SRA. And so how can we then use the input to fill in contents into the structure? So I'll start with the structure and get your Later we can discuss it here. In the, so this is the uh, outline that was agreed on right now. If it's agreed on right now, that doesn't mean it's now all cast in iron eh? or, or, or hammered in stone. It's, even that can be changed, but right now this is the state of um, uh, discussion. So the, most of the SRAs start with some letter from some coordinator, and here I think we are such a strong group, we should not have one name on here, we should have all the strong names, all the partners of uh, MetaNet. Uh, then describe briefly Meta, its objectives and goals, just to tell people who this is coming from. Uh, then, of course, we need to start with an executive summary. And now the important parts come, and the Two, three, and four are more the statement of what's going on now, what are the, what's the state of the art, what are the chances, and five and six are the planning part. So the next part is um, pulling together, summarizing all of, our, all of the things that we found about multilingual Europe, the facts, the challenges, and the opportunities. Yeah, we need to define it. We need to say what are the facts 
uh, of the languages, of the uh, technologies that are used for the language, although we come to the real technological part later, but more to the solutions. Yeah? What are the, what's uh, multilingual Europe? What are the economic challenges coming through multi to, through having these many languages, what are the special challenges, but also what are the opportunities that we have. So this is still on a non-so-technical level. The next thing is we need to say what is information communication technologies like. What is it like today? What are major trends and what are major predictions? Because whatever we need later to plan needs to fit somehow in there. Yeah? We cannot we cannot change all of the field of ICT. We have to live with what, whatever we think are the constraints, the, uh, the components, the major trends. Uh, that's difficult. Some, some of the predictions are difficult to make. Uh, then the next part is, um, now we come to our part, to language technology itself. We need to say, where are we? Uh, and uh, let me go right away into the, in, into the uh, otherwise I will lose too much time and come back again. So. Uh, let me rush through the, uh, these major points because we need your feedback then. So multilingual Europe, so facts, uh, challenges and opportunities. Yeah? What are the economic, cultural, societal challenges? Which of the challenges can be addressed by technology? Not all of them can. Some have to be addressed by policy making or legislation, something else. The opportunities, what are the opportunities for business and society and which of these opportunities require considerable support? Yeah, if there are opportunities that will be taken by industry anyway, that's fine, yeah, then we can point it out to them. But it's uh, So then ICT, I mentioned it, what's the current state? Summary of, uh, of ICTs, information communication technologies that are relevant for language technology. What are the computing paradigms, processing, I.O., software service, engineering? What's the embedding of things in other things and other technologies, embedded ICT? What are the applications, main applications? The major trends, what are the technology trends and early developments? I mean, early developments also in research, things that may not even be visible yet to the, to the public, but we know already because we are connected to research that they are going on the predictions which major changes can be predicted and of the major changes that can be safely predicted we should also add at least as possibilities yeah, a few other potentially disruptive changes of which we are not really sure whether they can come just to show that we are aware of this so if for instance tomorrow uh, quantum computing takes over much faster than we think yeah, what is going to happen things like this so then language technology, state limitations and potential, state of the art, language technology industry, sectors, companies, products, markets. What are the limitations, technological limitations for applications and markets, barriers from business and markets? And what's the potential of language technology for multilingual Europe? And what is also the market potential? Now note one thing here, that we did not separate the technology completely from business. Because this is, if you look at it, usually if you get here, some business people write some business part, some technologists write this, and two chapters, it usually does not fit. It's not convincing anymore. Yeah, it's not, it needs to be one story. It needs to be, uh, it needs to be interacted. So we need very closely, we need to work together with the business people uh, very closely in, in putting it together. So then, now we come to the planning part. First, the grand vision, the guiding vision for language technology in Europe. We take the input from the vision paper that uh, Joseph just, just showed. But this paper um, is very good. It's very convincing. Uh, it's food for thought already. But when it comes to, uh, to deriving from this now major targets of investment, something like uh, uh, multilingual information management. It's not yet the slogan. Yeah, that's not yet the, so, that's not, so, so we need some applications, some solution, some attractive solutions, applications that are driving, that can be described in a, in a short time that will, of, of which people will say, yeah, that's what we need, yeah, that's what we want. And, and so we still need, on the communication side, one translation process and one condensation process. So 
Then we need major predictions on technology progress. We need to also take the input from the vision groups. What, will, what can we change within the time frame, within the next eight years or so, or 10 years in, in language technology? And, and then we need, I come back to this two to three attractive and convincing solution visions yeah, that can be derived from these from these divisions of the vision paper, they will, all the ingredients, maybe not all, but many of the ingredients will be there. But we need for each then solution vision, sketch out the vision. We have need to say what are the needed language technologies, the needed progress, other technologies, maybe other technologies needed from outside. And what would be the prospected impact on society, economy, and on the markets? Not quite the same economy and the markets. Markets are part of the economy, but it can have economical effects even without being on the market. From this, we need to derive then the real planning. Now we need to set priorities for research and innovation. And this is the first part where, where discussion will be fierce, because one thing does not really fly very well, and this is if you take your field as it is, and because you want to be nice to everybody in the field, you just map it exactly into this plan. No prioritization, you take it as it is, yeah? and you just describe it in a way. That would be nice, you don't lose any friends, yeah? that's a very good thing, but uh, the people who invest will not like it because you say basically only all we need is more money for exactly the stuff we've been always doing. Yeah? Now we need more money for it. Yeah? That's not, not very good. So we need to prioritize. So we need to select research priorities that need to be guided and motivated, justified by the grand vision. And then we need plans for organizing the research and innovation process, the major lines of research, maybe three, maybe four, maybe two, actors from research, users, LT providers, language communities, and the modes, yeah, how, which actors and how do we cooperate, and phases. Yeah, we need phases for that. Yeah, you, can, you cannot, you cannot, um, you cannot claim that you are able to plan, for instance, a time six years ahead in the same granularity as the first years. Yeah, that's pretty clear. And from that, then, we can uh, talk about instruments. What are the instruments that are there already? And here we have to be very careful, because this big European machinery is not shy in making up new instruments uh, every day. So uh, we need to not to pass, yeah, not to lose any opportunities. We always need to keep our, we need to adjust this to new planning, because it's clear that during the next two years, or during the next months even, there will be lots of discussion about other types of organizing research. Yeah? So the instruments is very important that comes, and that needs to be flexible, stay flexible. We need to say that give some preferences and reasons, and then derive at the end yeah, the actual roadmap. And here we need to be prepared. That needs to be adjusted to the, to the opportunities yeah, of support. The preparation of roadmap, actions, timelines for preparations, and major research strands, the actions, whether they will be very large projects, one possibility, or programs within programs, or call it clusters, I mean, one thing is for sure, we need to propose something, otherwise this is not justified, what we want to do that's bigger and different from the normal cooperative projects that we are normally involved in. But it cannot be a complete new EU research program. It needs to be somewhere in between, and, and the way how we organize it and propose it, that needs to be in sync with a general discussion. Yeah? So maybe major clusters, strands, projects of projects, uh, prog programs within a program, and now coming back to the solution visions, because this will be really, and there we need your help, yeah? come to the consultation processes. I will say in a moment how this is going to be decided on. So we cannot have six or seven big leading visions. That's too many. Yeah? And having one would be maybe pressing all the stuff that Joseph just showed into one. Yeah, that's almost impossible. So some compromise in between. So, and there's a possibility either now, what do we do now with the infrastructures and the resources? Yeah, what do we do with that? Yeah, the, the, there's two possibilities that we have. One possibility is that we say we have three, two or three lead solutions, application scenarios yeah, that drive the, the whole process and have 
one horizontal supporting uh, big endeavor dedicated to um, providing all the needed resources and tools, basic machinery and, and resources for all the languages that are included, one possibility has advantages, yeah, putting it together as one big one, has disadvantages because it may be decoupled from research if you put it together, so it has advantages, disadvantages, or the other one to phase in the resource building into the lines. Yeah? So that's not, I'm curious what you think, but it's not yet decided, yeah? but that will, be, that will be one of the major points. So then um, we need to be broad, broad in the sense that the that these visions, just the way that Joseph already sketched now from the, with the vision seen from the technological viewpoint, not yet from the market and from the convincing, yeah, from the persuasion, there need to be several technologies combined. So there could be technologies that combine, let's say, speech and semantics and multimedia and maybe even mobility if it's convincing and driving enough. Yeah, they need to be broad, but they need to be also selective. They cannot include all of the field. I mean, we can dream up things that where there's space for every part of research, but that would not make sense. So they need to be selective, but they need to be broad. They need to be multilingual. We cannot do anything for single languages, but not all of them need to be cross-lingual. Yeah, of course, translation would be cross-lingual. There could be cross-lingual search, maybe, or so. Not all of them need to be cross-lingual. They need to be LT-centered. I will say what I mean with that. Uh, by, by that, that picks up a theme that Roberto had on his slides. Yeah? We always say that there are many applications that have language technology as part of that. Yeah? Could one of these things be one of our driving solutions where maybe language technology is only 30%? Do we want this? Yeah, so, the, so I think the lesson is that we should take language technology-centered applications, even if we can think of many, many others where language technology only plays a, a, a smaller but very important part. But that could be done in, uh, with other instruments, with other means, yeah, uh, in, 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 in other types of projects. Here we need to have language technology-centered, maybe not exclusive, there can be other technology in there, but it should be mainly language technology solutions, right? So not completely outside. And then we need to have things where the technologies are really immature. Yeah, we cannot take industry very often wants us to perfect something that is uh, already on the market. Yeah? So then we need to have something that's immature, but areas that have gradual maturation. There are certain things like fusion, for instance, nuclear fusion, uh, for which I would not really like to stage such a program because there could be disruptive. Yeah, there's there's big jumps necessary, big big uh, jumps. We, we need something where we can be sure that even if we don't get the utmost breakthrough, yeah, that we can deliver something that is much much better than today. So areas that have gradual maturation, not something that explosively will happen if a thousand people think one will have the big idea and then everything changes. Fortunately, our field is not of that sort anyway. And then they need to be scientifically ambitious, but they need to be commercially over-ambitious. So if there is something that of which you know that commercially you could very well do it within the next few years, why should we really touch it and not leave it to industry? That would mean there's no market, yeah? Because there's, there's some word that is called preterm maturation. Yeah? That if something becomes mature long before you think, we need to be aware, we need to be careful not to have these areas, because otherwise after two or three years of our project, there will be uh, the, the, the press release from the US that this thing is now very big on the market. It's the next big application of Google. So we need to be ambitious enough yeah? and commercially over ambitious. That's very important too. Okay, and then there are ingredients of which take it as a building block thing. Yeah? And it's a little bit like what Joseph said because his visions were actually com combinations of main technology trends that probably will have to be there, cross-linguality will have to be there, semantics was in, mobility was in, personalization is in, text is in, speech is in, multimedia is some, but not in all. Not every of these need to be in all. And they need to be application areas, like Joseph mentioned many, web search, translation, personal assistance, knowledge building, and so on. So we don't have to slavishly follow now 
the vision report and put everything that one vision group could dream up because they didn't want to lose out to press it into one project. Yeah, this, is not the, this is not the exercise now. The exercise is to have convincing solutions that drive this. So what's now the procedure yeah, of getting to there? And we, there we need all of your help and please participate. Yeah? Um, so the editorial board of the Meta Technology Council will now draft a skeleton yeah, on, the, on this basis, on the basis of the skeleton that I showed to you, filling in all the stuff that can be filled in that don't require your decision and the decision of uh, the consultation input and so on. Then discuss it in the Meta Technology Council, and now it's a circle, input from use the input from the consultation process because the European Commission will start, as Roberto has said in his uh, uh, presentation, there, there, there's going to be a consultation process, yeah, and many of you will take part in that, be invited. That needs to be that way, otherwise yeah, the European Union cannot have such a big expenditure without going through such a process. And our, that's why if we now decide to take, if we, if we decided to take a poll now, and it would clash with this decision process. It would be kind of strange. Yeah? Who would win or so? That, that would be strange. That we don't want. So we want to keep it in sync with the other process. And part of this consultation process is going to be um, a business forum yeah? in which uh, there was, some of you have realized that some people were not here for a while. Yeah? They were out there and not all smokers and they were out for too long. <laughs> and so, so there's a, a business forum also forming and uh, this one will also give input here, yeah? So, and, and then input from the meta community, from all of you, yeah? via the web, via these conferences, and so on, and other stakeholders who are interested. And this may go through a couple of rounds, and, but our goal is to have a version 1.0 in December. This is very ambitious, because this consultation, I mean, it's lots of input here, yeah? but our goal is to have a first version. It may not be yet what everybody likes, and so maybe in the end, no, it will never be that there. Yeah? But, um, and then we need to go, uh, we need to shoot for a final SRA, including the roadmap, meaning already instruments, timelines, exact plans, and so financial estimates and finances, and so that by mid-May, so that it can still feed in in time with the, what used to be called FP8 in the Horizon 2020 decision process, yeah, in Horizon 2020. So this is the, so you all understood the procedure, you can all be part of it, actually you have to, yeah? not everybody, but most of you <laughs> have to, otherwise it doesn't work, and you can be part of this decision process. In the end, if we still have the time, Nicoletta, then do something. Do we still have the time or not? Ah, we still have five. Okay, well timed. Okay. Uh, if we still have the time, we can entertain you with something else or you entertain us uh, with something else. It would be very nice to have a key slogan. Yeah? And um, it's not absolutely necessary, but many of the other initiatives have it. It should be very easy and simple. It should describe the main goal, like language technology in my shoes, or language technology everywhere. Or so it should be understood instantly. It should be effective outside of LT. This is very important. So 90% of your proposals will already be out by that. <laughs> so outside of LT, because it needs to work with public decision makers, with deciders in the corporate world, with media and public. Yeah? And many, pro so we collected during our meetings, this is not even a complete list, our, we were always taking notes in several meetings. Yeah? We had, we collecting long, long lists. Yeah? At some point we may put them up and share them with you, and you can ca come up with some uh, additional suggestions. Actually, Horizon 2020 uh, that Roberto already mentioned, or Horizon, yeah, Horizon, that was uh, uh, publicly decided. That was the result of a big decision process. Yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah, that was. I participated in it. it was, but I suggested something else. <laughs> so it was not my suggestion taken, and maybe it will not be your suggestion taken here. But uh, everybody can participate. I mean, this is in 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 the end uh, uh, democracy. Yeah? You all put in something, and then in the end, something is taken that none of you but one suggested. Yeah. <laughs> so that is uh, can be. So. 
think about it. Yeah, think about these. Uh, we won't go through here and discuss those now because this is a matter of taste, and one shouldn't discuss taste matters of taste in in in, uh, in conferences with very factual content. But um, so. Thank you very much, and uh, we still have time for questions, and I, I, I believe there will be questions for this topic, yeah? because this, the SRA is really the important thing. Here we have the big chance to mess up completely if we don't watch it, yeah? but if we use the chance, we also have the chance of getting it right. So thank you for your attention.